Beyond the shimmer and shrug of the high Atlas Mountains, the Dra and Dadi's Valley stretch far into eastern Morocco. The stark majesty of this country's interior beckons adventure seekers, and it's easy to lose oneself in the unsettling beauty of this place. sands sweep through a land that is more sky than earth, washing to a set of fine grain waves called Erg Chebi. An Erg is a moving sand dune, sort of like a slow ocean wave that crosses the desert. These sands actually came from Algeria. Sand skiing is a new rage among desert-bound adventurers. Though I've heard it's possible to get up to 30 miles an hour, Today, it's a bit slow going. Maybe, maybe you can speed that up. <laughs> the slopes are slicker, I'm told, after the rare rainfall. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the real reason I came to the desert. A camel safari to a nomad camp. Camel safaris reveal the lonely beauty of this terrain. The ruffles and flutes of the dunes are a scene straight out of Lawrence of Arabia, which was filmed here. We are in the Sahara on the ships of the desert, the vessels that made trade possible, that brought the gold and silver and merchandise from Africa to the Mediterranean and beyond. The dunes here are among the highest in the Sahara, some rolling with crest a thousand feet high. Silence is a sound here. What do you have, Richard? Uh, it's some sort of desert reptile. I'm not quite sure what it is. It may be related to a skink. Or then again, it might be something altogether different. The sky is brighter and clearer and more cluttered here than probably any place on Earth. The desert air is so clear, crisp. It's like the best observatory right here. After a traditional meal by lantern light, sleep comes easily in the untroubled air of the desert. There is here a dry, serene purity. There is most of all, a sense of peace. As morning rises over the Sahara, we journey on, crossing back over the immense Atlas mountain range towards Fez, with a brief stopover in the town of Ifran. The 
European influence adds to the richness of Morocco's character. The village of Ifran, built as a French outpost, looks and feels like I'm in an alpine village. At more than a mile high, it recorded the lowest temperature ever in Africa, minus 23 degrees Celsius. The town experiences snow during winter months and a cool climate during the summer. The French flavor is unmistakable. In the early 20th century, France established a foothold in Morocco after occupying adjacent Algeria. And eventually, Morocco became a French protectorate. This country peacefully transferred to independence in 1956. Entering Fez is like falling through layers of history and ending up just short of the present. It is Morocco's spiritual center, a city of minarets scraping the sky. From these towers, five times each day, the call to prayer is strewn across the city. The site for Fez was chosen by the first Arab to establish wide-ranging and effective control in Morocco by subduing the previously unconquered Berber tribes. Fez soon became a haven for religious refugees from Europe and Africa. The Fez Medina, or Old Town, is one of the world's oldest continuously inhabited cities. The gates to the Medina look ancient, but are actually only about 100 years old. Decorative buildings contributed to the city's prestige and helped attract a wealthy set to tax. By the last century, the city had fallen into ruin. But UNESCO, the UN Preservation Organization, is helping to restore the structures. Today, it spills over with commerce and life. The Medina in Fez is the largest and most complex in the world. And I'm told that even the locals who live outside these walls in Fez are afraid to come in here for fear of getting lost. And I'm lost. So I'm going to see if I can get out of here and how long it's going to take. So here I go. Stepping through these gates is like entering a time tunnel. The low-watt fluorescent lights, the endless serpentine streets, the moist embrace of the thick air, the sweet, edgy smells, the greetings with hands so dry they feel like crushed autumn leaves. Wow, this is going to take forever. Which way? Up, 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 okay. okay. Oh no, we're back when we started. <laughs> I never made it out. <laughs> there is no way out. Despite the clamor of the Medina, there isn't a sense of being rushed in Morocco. Time is something people seem to have plenty of here. While Westerners get annoyed with small inconveniences and delays, Moroccans have a saying, he who hurries has one foot in the grave. in this corner of the Medina open to an ancient way station for caravans, known as a caravanserai. Caravanserais were kind of like motels for caravans, and there were once hundreds in Fez. The buildings were tall, the animals would eat and sleep on the ground floor, but the merchants would take rooms upstairs.
Another caravanserai now holds a family-run shop that produces a rainbow of woven fabrics. Three generations of weavers create miles of handcrafted cloth. How long does it take you to make one? To make one piece of three meters, I need like uh, five or six hours. Whoa. Yeah. And you see the work, it's by hand and also by feet. Two, yes, two pedals down. Yes, to cross the treads like this. Uh -huh. So you must be in good shape. Yes. <laughs> The Medina hisses and clanks with the creation of handmade products. Look, camel skin dolls. So you put, so you, uh, you fill this, you stuff them, you stuff it, and you sit on it. sit on Tanning traditions go back thousands of years, and the tanneries of Fez have been producing Morocco's highly prized leather since the Middle Ages. Some of the vats have been in continuous use for centuries. Vats of many colors, stewed from plants and minerals. The skins spend 10 days in a brew of limestone and pigeon droppings to help soften them. And then another 25 days in the vats of dye. Each day, the leather must be turned by hand. How do they make all those different colors? So red from poppy flower. From the poppies for red. Okay. Okay. Blue from indigo. Indigo for the blue, that makes sense. Yellow okay. from saffron. Saffron, that's very expensive. The green from mint. From the mint, okay. So there's, there's just a wonderful perfume, if you want to call it that, that's wafting up yeah. here. Well, I, would, I wouldn't call it a, a pleasant smell. What do you, what do you call that? <laughs> Chanel number six. <laughs> Chanel number six. <laughs> Chanel, Mar uh, Chanel number six, Morocco. <laughs> Morocco. Whew. Wow, I don't know how you keep from fainting. Jews have lived in Fez even longer than Muslims, and the two have a long and harmonious history of cohabiting here. This neighborhood, known as the Mela, is thought to be the oldest Jewish enclave in Morocco. Between the 12th and 16th centuries, during the Inquisition, when the Jews were being chased out of Europe, they needed a place to go. Morocco opened its doors. The Mela has a different feel than the Muslim quarter of the city. Here, finely carved wooden balconies open onto the streets rather than into internal courtyards. And the small shops gleam with fine filigree gold made with age-old techniques carried from the Middle East and Spain. <laughs> 